Have you ever been told to get a physician specific financial planner and you're wondering, what should I pay for that? Is there actual value in that? Should I do one? Is it actually going to help me? What should I look for? Is this hype or is it a real thing? So we're going to talk in this video about physician specific financial planning. We're going to talk about all the things you need to know before you decide who to hire and what you should be expecting out of their relationship. And of course, we're also going to show you what to expect to pay for it. So being a fiduciary is really important when you're getting financial advice as a physician. It's critical. A fiduciary standard means that you have the advisor has a legal obligation to act in your best interest. That's in contrast to something called the suitability standard, which just means that you can't sell somebody something awful as a product salesman or saleswoman. So what that difference is, is kind of like if you're getting your medical advice from a doctor versus you're getting your medical advice from a drug rep. So that's like literally kind of like the different def, different definitions of fiduciary and suitability, but fiduciary is not the only thing that matters. So someone can be a fiduciary financial planner for physicians and charge 2% of asset center management and $20,000 a year in fees, and that's totally legal, right? So just because someone's a fiduciary does not mean they don't have any conflicts of interest. Fiduciary is a starting point to figure out whether or not there's value in that relationship, right? So that's really something to, to really consider because financial planners specific to physicians if they're charging a financial planning fee a lot of times it's somewhere between five thousand to twenty thousand dollars a year so that fee can be really really high now there's a lot of firms out there that charge less than that but you know that's that's not unusual to see that high of the fee for physician, physician specific financial planning and so with that level of fee what kind of value is there in that so the question you might ask yourself, right, is does the firm that you're thinking about hiring actually have expertise working with physicians? Do they actually have lots of physician clients? Do they have a lot of advisors in their firm that are married to physicians? Do they have advisors in their firm that have siblings or parents that are physicians? That's something that's pretty relevant, right? Because, you know, I'm, I'm married to a physician. It's a stressful life sometimes dealing with planning your vacation schedule around call and, you know, time times that have to be covered and just it's a lot right and so you know somebody that understands not just the financial you know things unique unique to physicians but also the stresses that are unique to physicians and families to help you get to your goals so like those are things that you would want to ask whatever person you're thinking about working with is does the firm actually have expertise with physicians how many types of people in my specialty is the firm working with you know and what type of you know expertise can you demonstrate and, you know, unfortunately, what happens a lot of times is the expertise is actually just marketing. A lot of people say, I work with doctors, and a lot of those people might be annuity salesmen or life insurance agents, right? Or people that are selling a product versus providing advice that's supposed to legally be in your best interest. So that's a big difference. It's something that you really got to watch out for because, you know, as much as it's not pleasant to pay a fee that's way too high, to a fiduciary advisor, it's even worse to pay a hidden or embedded fee in a product to a product salesperson just because you're probably going to end up with even less money long term because those commissions can be pretty high. Now, next thing you should ask a physician-specific planner, are there any conflicts of interest that could result in me not getting the right advice? So generally speaking, fiduciary will be the main thing you want to look out for. Fiduciary just does mean that they have the legal obligation to give you the best advice, but there's different kinds of fiduciary. And I am not as purist as some people out there. A lot of people will say you should only work with a fee-only fiduciary. I think that there are some situations where it's okay to work with a fee-based fiduciary firm. Uh, my firm, SLP Wealth, is a fee-based firm because of things like, you know, we have a, a company that's controlled by a common person, me, that has student loan refinancing bonuses, which are better than you can get on the website if you go shop directly, right? And so technically, because we have this you know, company that's controlled by a common person, therefore it's not fee-based, or at least we want to make that extra careful disclosure because uh, we don't want to, you know, have run afoul of any like marketing definitions that people have out there, right? At the end of the day, the real question is, is what are the conflicts? What are the conflicts of interest? What is anything that might get in the way of me getting the best advice for my family as a physician? And somebody that is dealing with, you know, somebody that, that is honest will be very transparent with all those conflicts, you know, and what they are, right? And even if somebody, you know, is purely getting twenty thousand dollars a year from you for a fee-only relationship, right? Even, you know, and they're providing all this great advice. Well, even that has conflicts of interest, and the conflict of interest is simply like, if you get a flat fee, you want to do as little work as possible for, you know, for the large fee that you're getting. Now you might say that's ridiculous. They'd work their tail off. Well, sure, 
you might have a ton of work in the first year or two, and this is often often the case in some financial planning relationships where you do a lot of work in those first few years together, and then there's less work in the future, which is like making the relationship profitable. And that's not there's nothing wrong with that, but you should be aware that you know there's enormous value in the first few years, at least, of a financial planning relationship for somebody who is either um, a validator or a delegator. And you know, I think that we can talk about that a little bit as well. Now, before I get to that, the next question to ask yourself as a physician, you know, is student loan expertise relevant to you, right? You know, if it is, is that knowledge really deep or surface level? So you want your, you know, financial planner to be your quarterback amongst all the different financial planners that you would, or financial professionals that you'd want to work with. And, you know, but at the same time, if a financial planner's knowledge of student loans is only surface level and you have 200,000 or 300,000 of medical school loans, then that could be a mismatch, right? I mean, if somebody has expertise working with ultra high net worth physicians that own surgical centers and you have, you know, a good income, but you have 200,000 of student loans, that their, their skill set might not match up to yours and they might charge you a way higher fee than you need to pay because your needs are different than somebody that is primarily just wondering about depreciation schedules for surgical centers, right? So that's something as well to think about is making, making sure that you don't understand more about the PSLF program than your financial planner does. And then finally, you know, benefits, taxes, and investments, these all have very physician-specific considerations. So things like benefits are enormous for physicians because so many physicians are high-income professionals employed by large organizations. So you've got four, uh, five, five, you know, um, 401ks, 403bs, 457s, 401as. Uh, you've got you know HSAs, dependent care, FSA, uh, like all kinds of things, right? And you know, you also have all these different. A lot of times you have tons of different health plan options to select. That can be really complicated, even for somebody who's a W two employee. And if you add in layers of being W two with also getting some 1099 income, now you're wondering about adding a solo 401k to the mix, whether or not you should. You're wondering about should I incorporate and do, do S corp or not? You're wondering about you know can I get the QBI deduction even though I'm a specified trade and service business? So there's very complicated things that can result for physicians where you do need that specific expertise to understand you know what is it that physicians struggle with, like financially, as they grow with their incomes and their careers, right? There's a lot of other things too that physicians are more susceptible to than other professions. Primarily, I think because physicians are looking for a fun something different. So like we see tons of people super interested in real estate income, passive income, right? Uh, a lot of this is just like, you know, you have to kind of help somebody talk through what they want, right? You're, you're ultimately in control. You're the person that gets to decide what you do with your money. And the question is, is just, do you love managing everything yourself? Right? And do you have the time? You want to have both of those things be in the affirmative, if you're not going to work with a planner. So if you either, maybe you do like managing it, but you really just don't have the time. You're busy. You have kids. You've, you're trying to keep everything together at work and at home and everything. You you should probably have a financial professional helping you stay on task, right? If you are somebody who just doesn't like managing money, like you really like medicine or you really like the life that you have, but just you know managing your finances is not something that feels fun, then as a physician with a good income, you can afford to outsource that or even you know, get a coach on your team that can help you along the way, right? There's different models of working with a financial planner as well, right? If you wanna work with a one-time engagement, you're probably gonna pay a few thousand dollars to do a one-time plan. And if you want a subscription arrangement, you might pay some sort of ongoing monthly fee. And there's other firms that have a minimum that you have to invest with them to qualify for you know, working with them for a percent of the portfolio that you let them manage, right? So there's all kinds of different ways to work with physician-specific planning. Uh, you know, I, I would just you know encourage you to shop around different options. Uh, and I think that you will be. It's very important to get a physician-specific planner that's a fiduciary if you're in a spot in your life where you can afford it and you want to do it. Right? You have to have the motivation and the desire to make it really effective. So if you have any questions or comments or anything that you want to share about physician-specific financial planning, if you think that. You know, if you want to ask more questions that you think you should ask, like, or ask about those, or if you want to share experience you've had with a physician specific planner, put in the comments. And thanks so much for watching.